One, two, one, two. Okay, can everybody hear me well? Can you guys hear me? Okay, fantastic, fantastic. I'd like to start off by saying welcome and thank you to all the Adobe guys for allowing me to be here today and giving me the chance to share some of my creative insight and share some of my journey on how I got to where I am today. So thank you to all the Adobe guys. Round of applause for you guys. And thank you to all of you for coming out today. You all look so good and sophisticated, pretty. You know, uh, in fact, they say that it's all about networking and it's not what you know, it's who you know. Am I right? Okay. Well, that being said, I want you to turn to the person next to you, look them in the eye and say, looking good today. Are you alone, are you? There's a guy behind you, just tell him. Fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. But yeah, it's good to be here, guys. And um, I'm going to share a few things with you about how I feel about being an illustrator and designer, some highs and lows, and some advice that I believe I can pass on to fellow budding illustrators and designers in the industry. Okay? Now, the guys at Adobe did ask me to elaborate on what it means to be a new creative. What does it mean to me to be a new creative? Well, I believe that as a new creative, we should always be at the forefront of technology. I believe we should always have the latest software and the latest tools to get the best workflow. Does anybody agree with me in here? Raise your hands. Fantastic, I'm not alone, okay? So with that being said, I'd like to invite you into my online virtual high-tech office that I've put up. So the first rule of being a new creative is be yourself and don't follow trends, okay? I believe that as an illustrator and a designer, uh, over the years, my perception is that there are often trends in the industry and often we can get caught up with trends in order to gain our client base. But I believe that if you want to be truly unique and have longevity in the industry, it's important that you focus on finding a style that is unique to you. I have a particular style. I'm well known for doing uh, illustration with lighting effects. Everything I do has light behind it. And that's because I'm influenced by all things light, all things creative, all things spiritual and divine and godly. That's just me. And it reflects well in my work. And I encourage artists who are watching online and so on and so forth, find a style that works for you. And when you're long dead and gone, people can look back on your work and say, that was you. That's your mark in the industry. So I believe it's always important to be yourself. And that has definitely helped me to get to where I am today in the industry. Okay, why did I become an illustrator? Well, naturally, it's something that I was good at at school. In fact, it was the only thing I was good at at school besides playing football. And um, I had two options. I could have been an artist or I could have been a footballer and played for Spurs when I was older. Any Spurs fans in the house today? Hey. <laughs> love it, love it. But yeah, I, I had a choice, and I, in the end, I chose to follow my artistic talent and go down the route of illustration. Initially, I went to college to do art and design, uh, and what happened was it was all traditional work. I mean, I'm not young myself, I'm a middle-aged man. And back in those days, we didn't have computers and systems like we do today. We barely had the internet, so it was all about traditional art, painting, drawing, so on and so forth. And I started a company back in 2001. It was a, a t-shirt company where we had to print our own t-shirts, and we had no designer. So I decided to learn how to design, and that's how I got into the digital side of my art. And in the end, cut a long story short, 
the business didn't work out, but I had the knowledge and skills to be able to create my own artwork. And I went on to work for a high street client called Pronto Print, and my career as a full-time designer went from there. In 2008, I believe, I decided to take the freelance route, and I haven't looked back since. So, again, it's natural talent. It's, it's doing things that you love. This is what it's all about. We're new creators. We do what we love, and we stick to that. Um, the main part of my presentation and what I wanted to talk about was how I changed from being someone who wanted to be successful to be in a position where I can now influence other people. Now, I'm a firm believer, guys, that no matter what industry you're in, no matter what you do in your life, ultimately what you think reflects in your life. The deep thoughts that we have day in and day out when we get up and go to sleep, the things that we meditate on are the things that ultimately manifest in our life. I'm a believer that as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you believe that you have the ability to become successful, then you will. But a lot of people have it in a fear, but they have a lot of talent. And that's the person that I was. I had talent, I always did well in terms of the output, but I always had it in a fear and a worry that I wasn't really gonna achieve what I wanted to achieve. I used to read all the magazines, Photoshop magazines, and the digital arts and computer arts, and look at all these fantastic guys with great portfolios and great client base, and I said to myself, wow, I want to be where you are. But inside me, there was a fear of achieving that. So whenever I got close to achieving my goal, I would always subconsciously make a decision to go in the wrong direction. So there was a lot of fear in my life and I had to work out a way to get rid of the fear. And it dawned on me that the things that we think ultimately reflect in our life. So I decided to change the way I thought and my perception of myself, because I then knew that my career would change as a result of that. And I think it was probably 2009, 2010, I began to understand that if I could influence my subconscious mind and just get my conscious thoughts to match up with that, everything would change. And lo and behold, it did, in probably like a two-year period, where I went from having no clients at all, living in a one-bedroom flat, um, and having very low income, to being in a position where I can look after my family. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because this is what worked for me. Everyone's got their own story to tell. You might know a good friend and have a foot in the industry, but I had no industry training. I didn't know no in the industry. All I had was myself and my belief and a few basic tools to get there. So what I did was I did a lot of research on the mind and how to influence my mind, and I had these affirmations on uh, I am successful and I am going to be just like that person in the magazine. And what I would do is get cutouts from the magazines and stick them on the wall and visualize being in the same position as those people. And I'm at a stage now where I believe I'm where those people are. And that's a blessing in itself. Um, and I also researched a lot of successful people in every industry and try to find out what is it that truly makes them successful. You know, we watch TV and we see people achieve great things. As a child, I loved to watch music videos and I'd watch the guys in the music videos perform great things and look in the mirror and try to mimic them. And, but what they never tell you is how they actually got to achieve what they achieve and what they do day in and day out. So I began to focus on a lot of self-talk, develop a new belief, and inspire people around me. And I mean, a lot of you guys are industry guys. You already know most of what I'm talking about. But to those people who don't understand what I'm saying, I would highly encourage you to research it and find out 
how to influence your subconscious mind and get the best results you can get. Because I believe that everybody in this room and watching online has the potential to be the greatest at what they do. I don't care what it is that you do, you genuinely do have the potential to be the greatest. Why? Because whatever it is that you create, I can guarantee you it's slightly different from the person that inspired you. It's not exactly the same. Therefore, it becomes unique to you. And you then are allowed to become the greatest at who you are. And that's just my belief. And I stand by that. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the crux of what helped me to change my thoughts and my aspirations. Uh, I like to listen to a lot of motivational speakers. I know some of you guys probably do as well. And I actually took the time to research and find someone in my life that I truly believe motivates me. Now, I listen to all these great guys like Tony Robbins and all these great motivational speakers, yeah? I'm sure some of you guys know who I'm talking about, yeah? Okay. So I've done some research and uh, I came across one particular person who really motivates me. And I'm going to play you a video, a very short video, a very simple video. And if you can decode the hidden message in the video, see me after and let me know. This, guys, is my inspiration. This is my five-month-old son, and this is the guy who motivates me day in and day out, along with my other two boys and my beautiful wife. Every day I look at him, he gives me a reason to become more successful and achieve what I need to achieve. And I encourage everyone to make sure that Whatever it is that you do, always surround yourself with the right people who are positive and support you in achieving the goals that you need to achieve. Okay. There are a couple of artists that I have been influenced by. Um, these three artists are the three guys that I spent a lot of time studying back in 2008, 2009. Pete Harrison, Peter Jarowski, and Radim Malenich. We have a similar style, but I would say that mine's kind of an amalgamation and... Uh, a mixture of what I like, but I was definitely influenced by these guys, so if you want to do, you can check these guys out, they're great. Um, but yeah, they definitely were mentors to me. Not that they know it, but they were mentors to me, and I think that they're fantastic at what they do. Okay, some of the things that work for me as a freelance illustrator. Now, I made the choice to become freelance and stay freelance. Uh, I've had a number of job offers. I was recently asked to work for, or had the opportunity to work for Apple in just off Oxford Street, uh, just recently, but after a bit of deliberation, I decided that it wasn't quite right for me because I did make a choice to stay freelance, do my own marketing, get my own clients, and have that longevity. And the things that have worked for me have primarily been online. I only do online marketing. I rarely get out and about and hand out business cards. It's all online stuff, okay? Um, I use various things from, I mean, particularly Behance. Behance has been great for me, guys. I know a lot of you guys are on Behance, but that has been great for me in getting international clients as well as UK clients. I also have uh, classified ad sites that I, uh, I, I work with. Of course, Twitter, of course, Facebook, of course, Google+, uh, the usual sites. But what I wanted to emphasize is that, again, I was an artist that had talent, but I had no in insight into marketing. So I had to take a lot of time out and learn a lot of marketing skills, a lot of SEO skills. How do I get my site organically up on Google? Um, how do I get my portfolio seen in front of the right creative directors when there are so many thousands of illustrators in the world today? And there are so many thousands of illustrators in the world today. And I'm not the best illustrator in the world. I will be the first to admit that. 
But I believe if you do the right marketing, you can get in front of the right people in the right places and have the right opportunities. Some people like to have an agent. If an agent works for you, that's fantastic. Um, I have an agent in Holland. I have an agent in the UK. Uh, thanks to the guys at Storyboards, if you're watching, thanks to you guys in Holland. Thanks to the guys at Mystery Box for taking me on in London. Um, I've had some really great work with great clients internationally, which I'll show you shortly. So, yeah, for me, it's all about online marketing and finding whatever tools you can to be aggressive with what you do and be an expert in marketing because a lot of artists fall short in that area. Okay, recent work. I'm going to show you three pieces of recent work that I have done. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you this piece, guys, is because quite often the best pieces of work that we do are the ones we put the least amount of thought into. I don't know if you agree with me here, but I was actually at home trying to show a guy how to use Photoshop, and I told him I'd show him in five minutes. Just give me five minutes to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the Magic One tool, the masking tool on Photoshop. Seven hours later, I came up with this piece of work. <laughs> and funnily enough, this has actually got me a lot of exposure. And I put absolutely no thought into this whatsoever. You know when you go to art galleries and people look at the art and say, well, that's fantastic. I can see the ethos and the theme behind it and the history. Well, people might say that about this, but uh, there is no history in it. It's just purely off the cuff going as my brain leads me, and out comes this piece of art. And quite often, the best work I do is like that. The best work that I've done is personal work. My portfolio generally has a lot of personal work more than client work, because the personal work is the work that gets me the exposure more than the client work, funnily enough, because it's more creative. Okay? This is actually a, uh, a work that I did for a client last year. I worked for the F1 team and I had to design the iPhone, Samsung, iPad, covers, fascias, cases, that they were going to market in uh, Harrods and all of the, the F1 circuits around the world. And I was asked to design images with Kimi Raikkonen for that project. If you go on my site, you'll see a whole range of different cars that I've designed. But that was a great project. Why? Because I was offered residual income. It wasn't just, here you go, get paid, and on your bike. I was offered the opportunity to have residual income, um, which is beneficial for a lot of freelance designers. It's great to have income when we're sleeping. It's great to know that you don't have to hit deadlines every month just to pay the bills. But that was a good opportunity for me, and it got me a lot of exposure with other clients in the industry. This is my personal favorite, why? Because I love Usain Bolt. And again, it's got me a lot of exposure. And again, I put very little thought into what I do. I just went purely off inspiration using Illustrator, Photoshop, and Coral Painter. I'm a big painter fan. Um, got some fantastic tools in there. And on my Behance portfolio, this has got me a lot of exposure. And again, clients from abroad so on and so forth, okay? Career highs and lows. Okay, well, I wanna share with you some good and bad that I've experienced in the industry. Um, particularly working with clients, being a freelance designer who had no formal training on how to handle clients. And I really hadn't had any formal training. So I really did things off the cuff. Ringing clients, getting hold of clients, chasing clients, not getting paid by clients, having to pretend to be a bailiff to get money back from clients, asking my friends to ring them and put on a posh voice and threaten them to remove their goods in two weeks if they didn't pay. It's all happened. But it's a great learning curve. Uh, I have had the pleasure of recently and consistently doing work for Arsenal FC, although I am a Spurs fan. Are there any Arsenal fans in the house? Yeah, yeah, well, whatever. But anyway, 
Great experience working with those guys. I do a lot of flash work with them. So when you go to the airport and you look at the, the, the ads at the airport, I do the ads, Arsenal versus Bayern Munich, and which they lost, by the way, Arsenal versus Man United, so on and so forth. But that's definitely a career high for me, although it was tough because when I was working at home, I've got three sons, and my three sons all support Tottenham, and my wife, and they all have Tottenham kids. And they, my son would walk into the room when I'm there, busy, like, late at night doing the Arsenal job, and he'd walk in and say, Dad, how could you do that? What are you doing? And I had to politely explain to him, it's just a money thing. Because I've manipulated him to believe that it only evolves around Tottenham. But anyway, great experience working with those guys. And um, I get a lot of regular work from them, so that's fantastic. Thank you to the guys, if you're watching, from PF Comms in uh, Old Street, just down the road. They're the guys that I work with on that. Okay. This logo is the first major client that I had back in 2008 when I had no clients. I remember spreading my portfolio across a number of sites, paid and unpaid. Some work, some don't. You have to take a risk. I put my work up and um, I got a call one night about nine o'clock from an agency in London who said, how you doing? Got a piece of work, it's for Sky TV. Can you do it? If so, we'll be up all night. Are you up for it? I thought about it for half a second, said yes, and got on with the job. Lo and behold, we stayed up till about, I think it was seven in the morning doing this work, working with the creative director, doing the logo for the old Gladiators TV show, all the print work for it. And this really did help me to put myself in a position to be taken seriously by other clients. Because as you all know, it's all about reputation. You could be great at what you do, but when people see that you've worked for other clients, obviously it helps. So that was a milestone for me, and that's in my portfolio today. This is my first interview that I did with Photoshop Creative. Again, this is back in 2008. Great exposure for me. Uh, great experience. And um, I've then gone on to have interviews with Advanced Photoshop, which I did last month. I did a tutorial and an interview in there. I don't know if you, know if you guys read it, but I was in there. Uh, I've done interviews with computer arts online and various other stuff uh, and, and blogs online that stemmed from this initial contact from Photoshop Creative Magazine. So that was great for me. That was another high. I do regular work with Sony Music, those guys by Knightsbridge, Sony Music um, record label side of things. They found me on a classified ad site. And I haven't looked back since, to be fair. Um, great work. I work for probably seven or eight people within the company who work in different divisions, doing online presentations for them, and basically making their PowerPoint presentations look pretty. That's just what I do. I'm an executionist. That's what I do. Um. And they're my most regular client. And through them, I've had the ability to work with and design work for people in the industry from Lenny Kravitz to Pharrell Williams to Paloma Faith to Jurex and Nando's and many other clients that you'll see on my blog. But they've been a great help to me. And again, if you guys are watching, much love and thank you for the support and the regular work. Okay. This was my first major international client working for Personal Liquid from the guys at Storyboards NL. I'm known for doing swooshy, light, nice things. So the swooshies were what they wanted me to do. I didn't do anything else, but they paid me well just to do the swooshies. So um, agents can be really good for getting you um, high paid work for doing very little. I find that when I get clients for myself, I tend to not always charge them what I should, but that was a well paid project. Fantastic, just for doing two swooshies. It didn't take me too long. But dead, you know, it is what it is. And um, that I then went on to work for McDonald's for the same agency. So, and then it, again, it was swooshies and light effects and the stuff that I love to do. Very important, guys. If you want to wake up in the morning and be happy, do what you love to do. And I love to do swooshies and light effects, so that's what I do. Uh, this, for me, was probably the highlight of my career. Thanks to Michael, 
who's traveled from Paris today, the guy that just did the presentation, he was the guy that allowed me to be interviewed as a new creative on Behance to uh, give my insights on what it means to be a creative. My interview was on the Adobe site. I was on the homepage for seven days. Fantastic. So Michael, you're a great guy. I love you. We've hardly spoke, but I still love you. And through this opportunity, I've had other opportunities to do interviews, various blogs, and I mean, wow, it's great. You know how one opportunity can open so many doors, but still allow me to be myself. That's really important. When I first started in the design industry, again, I had no formal training. So I would go to interviews wearing shirt and tie, and the creative director would look at me like, what are you playing at? So I didn't know a lot of things, but now, I've gained experience, and I'm in a position now where I can talk to guys who would like to be in my position. Fantastic. Um, so this is probably the career high for me, and um, I believe that that concludes my presentation. If you want to get in touch with me, you can via Behance slash Gavna, or you can find me on Twitter, Whitecourt25. Any questions you have, fantastic. Over to you. Thank you.